Welcome to another Friday Functions video. In this video, we're going to talk about doing dynamic sorting in a, table, in a data table. So I'm going to start with this Excel workbook. And in this Excel workbook, I have a table configured. And the table has a list of sales. Notice the table name is Table 1. You need to have a table. So if you don't have a table in your spreadsheet, select the range and then choose one of the table formats from the ribbon. You can also rename the table if you go to formulas and define name. I'm sorry, formulas and name manager. Then you can edit and rename the table. I will often rename the table if I want to make sure that I recognize what data I'm talking about. Table 1 is not very explicit. So after I've done that in Excel, then I go ahead and save my file. And I'm saving it just to my desktop. And I'm going to go back to Power Apps. So I'm going to uh, skip this because I'm actually going to insert a data table. So I'm going to insert a data table, and then the panel will pop up asking me what data do I want. So let's go ahead and add a data source. We're going to add that Excel file as a static data. Now, of course, you could add any data you want. I'm just making this video easy so that I could also give you the, the file if, if you ask for it. Okay, so I'm going to hit Add Static Data. And then I'm going to browse to my sample Excel file and open that. By opening it, I'm actually selecting it in Power Apps. And then I can pick the table sales, which normally says table one, but I renamed it, remember? So now it says sales. It just makes it easier for me to do my formulas. And then in the order that I'd like it to appear, I'm going to put the columns. So I'm going to put region first. I'm going to put rep next. I'm going to put the item next. I'm going to put the units next. I'm going to need the order. And then the unit cost. How much does it cost? And then I'll add the order date at the end. Okay, so now that I basically have all my columns, I'm going to close the panel and make my grid bigger. And I'm going to leave some room at the top for the part two of this video. So this video is going to walk through the steps of adding dynamic sorting to your columns. In the next video, we're going to use these uh, similar steps to add dynamic filtering. Okay, so I'm going to align this middle and align its center. And now I have my table like I want it. I could put a border around it. Let's put a little single border around it and a few dotted lines just to denunciate, you know, to create a demarcation between the rest of this workbook and this table. Um, I guess the other thing I could do is give the screen a background color, a very, very soft background color. This way it would stand out if I make the table background white, okay? But I'm not going to worry about look and feel for this. We just want to talk about dynamic sorting and filtering. Now, if I want to make, just since we don't talk about data tables so much, let's go ahead and rename this data table data data sales. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is change the size of it to 14 and the font as well. I'm going to change that to one that I like. Now notice that the body of the table changed but the header didn't and that's because that has its own dedicated property. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Now, of course, I can use formulas here to set the heading font to be the same as the body and so forth and so on. And actually, that probably would be a smart thing to do because that way, when I change the body, 
it will automatically change the heading. Do you want to see what that looks like? Maybe I'll show you real quick here. Okay, so right now the heading size is a step bigger than the the body size. And basically if I wanted them to both change at the same time, I could use the formula of the heading text and the formula of the body text to match. Um, and so if I went into heading font, right? Um, right now it's Segoe UI, which is basically what I want. But what if I change the heading font to be, sorry, just gotta select this. Data sales dot font, right? Data sales dot font. This way, when I select the whole table and I change the font, the heading will change as well. And you can see that, right? So if you don't like that you have to set them separately, and some people don't like that, then go ahead and set the heading font uh, property to be equal to the data table font, and then when you change the table, it will change the heading. And you can do that for size as well. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and go back to our topic, which is dynamic filtering. So I'm going to zoom in up here, bigger, and I'm going to add an icon. So I'm going to insert a sorting icon, which the one that we usually use is this arrows up down. Okay. Once I add it, I'm going to move it over to the right side of my column, make it a white font, and then make it considerably smaller, right, so that it fits there in that space. This is what people will click on to sort by this column. Now, I want to tell um, so I want to go into the on select of this and tell Power Apps what column we're sitting on top of, because basically the icon is just sitting on top of the table. So it doesn't really have any logic that says, oh, I'm sorting by region. So I need to set a variable that says that. So I'm going to set a variable and I'm going to call it my sort order. And then the, I'm going to give it a name, which is the column name. Right, region. All right, so now I have the sort order tagged. So in this case, I'm going to select the data sales, and in the items property of my table, I'm going to filter my, I mean, sort my, my sales. So I'm going to do sort by column, sales, and then I'm going to, it wants to know, if you look at the syntax up here, it wants to know the source first and then what column, right? So basically I'm going to use my variable to set the column. So my variable is my sort order. And then it wants to know ascending, descending. Now I can do a variable for this too, but in this case, I'm just going to do ascending. If you want to know how to swap it back and forth, go ahead and create a SharePoint app and you'll see that we use an update context variable for that. And if it's ascending, we swap it over to descending. Um, just for the sake of this video, since you've seen that a hundred times, I won't do that one. I'll just do it ascending here for the video. And now if I, run this and I click on region it will sort by region now it will scroll because there's more data than will fit on this page so you can see the scroll bars that are on the right right okay 
Now, of course, to make that work for every column, I'm going to duplicate that scenario. So just to show you how I do that quickly, is I'm going to go ahead and rename this icon sort region. And then I'm going to copy and paste it. Copy, paste. I can also do Control C, Control V. I'm going to zoom out so that I can see because it comes up to the top. Little trick that kind of got lost in the past. So I'm going to try Control C with my keyboard, Control V. Same thing, it will still come up to that top left corner. And I'll just put it over there. I don't need to be really picky about where I put it because I can use my alignment to align them. Okay, control V. I'm just control Ving after that because you know what I mean? I don't need to. Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to select them all and I might just, you know, I in real life, well, I'll do it here too. I would definitely rename each one of these because who knows how I'm going to use them later on in the app. Like the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to do dynamic filtering. You'll need to be able to tell the difference. So I always encourage people, rename your objects so that it's easy to understand. And if you decide to, you know, go run for office, um, the people who use your app, who create your app or edit your app after you will understand what you've done as well, much easier. Okay, so now I've aligned them top and I'm going to just rename them. And so I just click on them and then I look at the screen to see what column that is. And I'm going to set this um, to sort rep and I'm going to change the, the uh, set to rep. Same thing with region. I'm going to rename this sort item. That's that. That's the property that I'm resetting. We'll call this sort item here. Probably want to be consistent in the order you do this in. Sort units. Change this to units. The reason why you kind of want to be consistent as opposed to what I just did a few seconds ago is because when you break your consistency, it's easy to forget stuff, you know, or skip stuff. So rename, then change the variable. You keep that pace, you, you won't miss anything. Okay. Sort cost. And then we will put in here, and it's important that you use the literal column name when you're setting these variables. It's not as important on the name of the control, but it's very important in the variable itself. Okay. And then if we uh, run this, it should just work. I had the pleasure of going out to meet the user group in Charlotte, North Carolina. And every time I travel, I tend to have this issue of I get a cold on my way back. So that's why I only travel like 5% of my year. So you can see that it works, right? Because we're dynamically filtering by what they, I mean, sorting by what they click on. Understand that I'm only sorting one column at a time because that sort will cancel out the other sort, of course. Um, so think about that. In the next video, which I hope to do before the end of this weekend, because I wanted you to have it this week, I'm going to show you how to do a similar thing for uh, sorting by, um, I mean, filtering. Okay. And of course, I could have added auto date. I just kind of ran out of energy. And that's how simple that is. So I like this approach um, because people are used to it like people are accustomed to it, being able to click on a header and sort ascending descending now if you can find a way and maybe you have a better idea than i did if you can find a way to 
indicate to them in some kind of way that clicking on the header will do this, then you can use the on select of the header, right? You can use the on select of the header. I haven't tried it. You want to give it a try? That would even be a better experience where the header itself can be clicked on versus the icon. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. You'll be hearing from me very soon on dynamic filtering, which is a request from quite a few people. Um, just because I was flying yesterday, I didn't get a chance to do it. But enjoy your weekend, and you'll see that coming up very soon. Happy power hopping. Ciao.